and I mentioned you have your own dog cast in the movie. It's a little bit of nepotism there. <laughs> Getting your dog in the movie. <laughs> well, it wasn't my, I, I didn't come to the set and say, please take my dog. There was a casting, a proper <laughs> casting, and she just did really well. And I think what Jonathan liked about this relationship between her and me is that yeah. she was basically just around me. I, she's not a trained dog. She would never do what I told her <laughs> and what, what anybody else told her. So... Yeah, it would somehow just also be an element that was adding up to the story. And they had, the Husses had a lot of animals, so that's why he wanted to have a dog in a film. She was very good, you know. I'll tell her. Watch it, please. Yeah, I thought I was impressed with the performance. <laughs> um. <laughs> So as you can see, an accidental fall is going to be hard to defend, given the height of the window sill. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's an investigation for uh, more suspect uh, and your 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 uh, more sus suspicious, suspicious death, yeah. yeah, and your témoin assisté because you were the only person there. Okay. And of course, you, you're his wife. Um, now, looking for a stranger who walks in, kills him while you were sleeping right above and Daniel was up for a walk is a shitty strategy. Samuel had no enemies that... Stop, make stop. I did not kill him. That's not the point. Welcome to the actor's side uh, today. Wow, first of all, she's very busy. Uh, two major films. One of them, which has opened, uh, Anatomy of a Fall, and one of which uh, opens uh, in uh, December or early December, uh, The Zone of Interest. Both of them debuted at the Cannes Film Festival and came in with the Palme d'Or and the Grand Prize. Not bad. And of course, uh, Sandra Huller has a fantastic resume of films. You may have seen Tony Erdman, I'm Your Man. We're going to talk about that. I love that movie. And so many others. Welcome. Sandra Huller. Hi. Hi, and thanks for joining us here on the actor's side. Thank you for having me. As an actor, you are, you are having a, a great time right now, I think, you know, with a lot of unique roles that you're getting to play and uh, tension around the globe uh, for them. How does that feel? <laughs> um, it, feels, um, it feels very unexpected in the first place it feels good to have this kind of attention also for the movies not only for myself but for the things that we've done and to be to to like feel this kind of respect that's coming towards us is a really beautiful feeling yeah you know I've seen uh, headlines uh, on various publications now the LA Times when can happen called you the queen of can um, uh, one of the trades here uh, said actress of the year. All this stuff is like crazy uh, that's happening. I'm just wondering how you look at that. You look at that side of the business uh, that you're in and, and see that kind of attention now. Um, I really don't know how to answer that properly. Yeah. It's really something that it's not in my hands that yeah. people say these things, see these things. And there was a question mark behind that, what you said. <laughs> um, so just to make, you know, it's not, it's, that, that's not a point that somebody was making. It was a question. And I'm really uh, grateful that it was a question because, <laughs> you know, um, it's a special situation because I think the attention is so much higher now because my fellow colleagues from here are involved in a strike. And I think that changes a lot for our film because I'm not in... Um, I'm not in the um, I'm not in the SAG yet, and uh, so I can't join them, and so I'm able to work. And so it, I think I don't know if it would be the same if everybody was here. What you're referring to is uh, Neon, which is distributing um, the Anatomy of a Fall uh, here, uh, and A24, which is distributing. Uh, the zone of interest are not associated with the producers that are uh, negotiating yes. uh, in the in the actor strike. So, the, uh, SAG after actually encouraged people to go out and make these uh, agreements and have these agreements. So you could talk about that. Yeah. They feel it's helpful actually 
to uh, to the uh, what the actors are trying to. Yeah, achieve. as long as we talk about it, as long as we continue talking about it, I think yeah. it can be helpful. Yeah. What do you think about that, though? I mean, I'm astounded when these strikes. I'm a member of the Writers Guild, so. Uh, but I was astounded at all the issues um, that were there, that it's very hard to make a living as an actor now, as a, you know, a regular actor, not, you know, Meryl as Street. far As far as I know, that, that's one of the things that they are talking about, but also about giving away the rights for their voices, their bodies to AI, for the studios to do yeah. with them everything they want to, which is impossible. Um, it's like something that really should not happen and I have nothing but respect for the work that sec after is doing and all the people involved in the streets going there every day to stand in the lines. It's really, it's amazing. So that's going to bring me to, before I talk about these other films, I'm Your Man, which you played a wonderful supporting role there as an android, as AI, you know, and you're looking at this world that that depicted where you can create almost human-like characters doing human-like things. Sort of the idea there was the perfect man. It was an experiment. And, uh, and you were hilarious in that movie. It, it was a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> film. Very smart, romantic comedy, actually, in, in many ways. But it dealt with these issues that are really affecting uh, everybody now, not just in the entertainment industry. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Maria Schrader was thinking about that <laughs> outcome <laughs> at that moment. It was also just an experiment. In the first place, it was an experiment or, or uh, an experiment of, of thought um, about what love is about. Is it about to, is it possible to find a perfect partner? That was the question that she was asking. Mm -hmm. And what is that in the first place? And isn't it more interesting to find somebody who is like, you are able to talk to in a proper way who does not know everything that you want to have and gives it to you. It feels kind of strange, yeah. right? Um, so what is the human experience uh, to, uh, compared to the AI experience? That yeah. is, yeah. I thought that was a terrific movie. I, I, you know, you. it got a lot of attention. It, it deserved more than that, I actually thought, you know, which leads me to you really pick well on the roles you do, the movies that you're doing, you know, from Tony Erdman, which was the talk of Can the year that came out, uh, to that, to many others that you're doing, to these two films now. And I've noticed you're working with a lot of female directors in your career uh, uh, the last few years. Uh, and being in these movies that are getting just like a universal acclaim, is that on purpose you're trying to give a chance to the female a voice behind the camera as well, or is that just the way things have worked out? Well, I think a lot of people are working with women. It's yeah. not, you know, uh, and I find it's very normal, and I don't pick directors by their gender or sex. It's not interesting to me. I was lucky enough to meet people who have great visions and great stories and um, who are a blast to work with. And <laughs> some of them were women. So it's, yeah, yeah that's what I do. You actually played a director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, with Justine Trier in the, yeah. her previous film. I guess that was the first time you worked with, she's the director of Anatomy of a Fall, obviously. And uh, you had played uh, this director in this crazy production that was going on, this movie <laughs> that you were making. Um, and that started a relationship, I guess, there uh, uh, between you and her because she wrote with you in mind this incredible role in Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, we've known each other for a much longer time. And I think we never went out of each other's head during those years. It was in 2012, I think, in Berlin. And I watched all of her films and I was a group. I'm still a fan of what she's doing. <laughs> and I really hope that this relationship will continue not only in a private space but also professionally. So when you get a script like Anatomy of a Fall, just such a complex character, I know there are the big question that everybody, did she do it? It's about a, uh, a woman in this marriage and her husband dies, he uh, has a fall, uh, he falls off a balcony. So did he fall? Was he pushed? Did he trip? You know, there's all those questions. That's the basic thing there, but that's not what this movie is about really, you know, it's not about how did it happen, who did it, and all of that. She's on trial for this, accused of murdering him. 
but so much else is on trial here, I think, in this movie. Yeah, I think Justine's first question was, how do couples live today and what are the basic fights that they have? And also, what if a child discovers the relationship of his parents, of their parents, um, very much later than in the moment they are living with them, like on trial? for example, in a courtroom. Yeah. Um, what do we know about our parents anyway? Um, what do we know about each other in general? Um, how much secrets, how many secrets can you have? What is like the proper amount of things that you can hide or not? And what is the truth? How do we find it? Are there more, is there more than one? All these things. So the sort of who done it or crime story is just a part of this. It is an important part, but not the, the only one. And when you started this, you know, to get into the character, find a way into the character, did you ask her? Because she doesn't seem to want to say, even to this moment, uh, how she views it. Uh, did you want to know uh, in, from the point of view of the writer here? I wanted to know, uh, yeah. but not from the beginning. I felt, when I read the script, I really felt that she was on her side, Justine was on Sandra's side, and she kind of protected her because all the little parts that she wrote in there of the the misogynistic, or misogyne, I don't know the English word exactly, but I, don't know, I just yeah. know the German version, um, they are in there and really on the table, and you can talk about it afterwards too. So she she shows the violence against a woman who just wants to say the truth and find out the truth herself because she doesn't know what happened really. She also just has her imagination to, to find out. Um, but I thought that it would be important to know if my director thinks that my character <laughs> was a murderer or not, but... Because um, that would affect how you play it, I guess, in some ways, maybe. In some ways, but also I realized that I will never have that answer and I will never give it to myself. I never made that point for me. I just decided that I'm trying to... I want her to tell the truth all the time. That's whatever that is, but I want her to be honest, like with everybody, no matter how hard it is for everybody around. Yeah, I just signed it. I, I saw it again last night. Seeing it again is, uh, it's like seeing the movie for the first time in a different way, um, because I noticed so many little things there, and particularly in your character here. You know, I came out saying, I, I just, I can't believe she did it. She's so complex. She's so interesting to me. People have referred to her as cold in some way. She's not at all. No. I think she's a great mother. Clearly, she is in a marriage where there was love, and it's that battle. that it, That's on trial. Marriage is on trial in this movie, too, in a weird way. Yeah, freedom, too, what it means and how much of it can each person in a relationship have and where is, like, the, the boundary of that, where is the line that you should better not cross or... What, um, yeah, what does it take to, to, to like, to, to take that freedom for yourself? And yeah. if you take it for yourself, does it mean you take it away from another person? Or does it mean it makes it possible for the other person to take it too? Um, all these things. And what changes with, for example, the lack of money, the, the change of, like the situation that you are in financially or when you move to another country or when, you know, language doesn't work between you, when you don't understand each other properly. All these things were important. Language is a key thing in this movie, too. Uh, much of your role is played in English and some of it in French. You're German. <laughs> you have another movie out I didn't even mention yet this year where you play a Hungarian... Uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely global here, but yeah. language does play a great part. I mean, she launches into English at certain times. You're wondering, why does she need to do that? Is that to deceive or to clarify or, you know, all of that in, in the way we communicate? Well, I, I think it's really simple. She switches when she doesn't have the words to express what she's feeling and what she's thinking because it's sometimes really complicated, especially when she's talking about her deceased husband. Uh, yeah, what, what, how would she find the words in French, especially when there's questions that she didn't see coming. She needs 
the other language to, to express herself. And for those who haven't seen it, there is one spectacular scene, the fight that you have, that begins in the courtroom as an audio thing, truly brilliantly directed and acted. And, uh, and then it goes into a flashback between you and the husband. This fight's in English. That's the one language that you can share with each other. And that was appropriate for that moment in the film. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like one thing that they are fighting about in that fight. Yeah. If language is a middle ground that they both chose to understand each other, or if it's something that she is taking for herself to feel safer than him. It's like, that's kind of the thing that they fight about, and you would have to watch it too, to find uh, out. This became, I just learned this, but I knew that it had won the Palm Dog. Uh, and the Palm Door, and it's the first movie to win both the Palm Door and the Palm Dog. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> in Cannes, uh, there's a wonderful dog here. Uh, Messy plays Snoop, uh, and uh, you have a, a dog that is your own dog. I understand in a Zone of Interest, um, and uh, and you working with a young kid who's a wonderful actor. This um, Milo Mashallah. Oh my God, I thought he was amazing. Yes. Yeah. He is, yeah. They say never work with kids or animals, and you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, both of it. Yeah. Yeah, but working with Milo was kind of a special experience because n normally, like, younger actors are treated in a special way or yeah. they need special, I don't know what, but he didn't. He was, like, a complete partner for me and for everybody on set. And he had, I can't say that he really had a lot of fun. Um... But the thing that he had to do or the things that he had to do were really not so easy. He had a lot of emotional scenes where he would, and they didn't fake anything. There were no fake tears or anything. He really went to that place inside of himself where he would feel all these things and show it to us. So I, I feel very, yeah, it feels like a gift that he gave to us in a way. How do you prepare as an actor? You come from the stage and, um, and have all that training. But to find your way, do you have a process, they always say with actors, is no. there a process you go through to like find Sandra? And she's named, got the same first name as you in this, but. Um. Mm. Yeah, that now we come to the lame part because I really can't answer that. <laughs> it's really like there is no system. I yeah. mean, of course, when you do theater, you have like a certain process that's for everybody. There are different phases of rehearsal um, that everybody goes through, but here, I just try, I really basically just try to be present in that moment and to be connected with my partners, my director and everybody on set. I really don't like this. There are forms of s separation that comes with acting sometimes or being in your own bubble or something like that. I don't, I don't like that feeling. I like to be connected. Do you take it home with you? Do you find it hard to no. get, no? No, in the beginning when I started acting in film, there were two films in the beginning where I had difficulties to, to let go or where the characters would kind of accompany me for several months after, the, after wrapping this. Was that Requiem? This. Oh, one of those. <clears throat> also Requiem. That yeah. was your first film, right? Yeah. And for so that, I had you to... won all kinds of acting prizes. Not a bad way to start, by the way. Yeah, I was really lucky. But, um, yeah, I learned it from, from that. I, I, I learned in that moment that I would have to take care of the moment after and how to let go of things. So now I'm, now I'm fine. Fortunately, from that film, because people think she's possessed and uh, she's an epileptic and it's like, uh, it's intense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to live like uh, that all the time. Um, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the zone of interest which is uh, now American audiences are going to be seeing what we saw. I didn't know what I was seeing. And this is the best way to see a movie. When I went to Cannes, I, I was deciding what I was going to review. And I looked at the log line on it, and it didn't say much. But it sounded, well, that's intriguing. I'll, I'll go. I had no idea what I was going to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it just, But you knew Glazer before. I, I, I knew his work, for yeah. sure. But I had no idea what he was going to do with this. I didn't know what it was, and then I, I was thinking, oh, is it a Holocaust movie or something? It was unlike anything I've ever seen, and my review reflected that for sure, but uh, I was just blown away, for lack of a better word, as many people were. It was so powerful in its own way about the banality of evil 
as they say. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Al Pestazon. <laughs> <laughs> it really is an amazing job. I'm just curious, though, you're playing a horrific woman in this. Um, this is the wife of Rudolf uh, Huss. Huss and um, she, Hedwig, and um, it's very hard to find anything to like about her. You're watching this kind of in horror. She's living what she thinks is in paradise right outside of Auschwitz as, as these horrible things are going on in the background, not shown, yeah. but felt. And how do you play a role like that? Well, that nobody would like her was something that I did on purpose. I didn't, uh, I didn't mean to get close to her in any way or be empathetic with her in any way or find the moment where we would connect, which I would probably normally do to find an emotional thing that would be something that, you right. know, just a secret of mine. I didn't even try because I, uh, I wasn't interested in portraying a human in that sense. I very much felt like a part of this film, like an element of this film, because we didn't want to do a biopic about the Husses. How, what an idea would that be? Uh, I think Jonathan wanted to tell something about the Holocaust itself and about how, how people are able, human beings are able to do this to human beings. And it was not so much about who she is or something like that. And I think it was the same for my partner, Christian Friedel. He also didn't do this sort of psychological research or anything. That's kind of an act of love that you do with a character. And mm. I simply didn't feel able to do that. Um, so it was more of a physical approach. I had questions about uh, how would somebody walk when they had five children, when they were working in the garden constantly. and. She was basically a farmer, which also doesn't tell anything about her inner life. It's just a way of what what would the body do? And that's what what I did for those. It was only four weeks for me. So it's almost like watching a documentary in some ways. We're just sort of viewing yeah. that life. And it's such an interesting way that it was shot. He recreated the house had no cameras in your way, unlike I imagine any movie you've ever made before, yeah. where mm -hmm. you're not even seeing the cameras, right? Yeah, the cameras were sometimes hidden, sometimes we saw them, but they were very small. And we never knew what they would capture, what they would cover, if it was a close thing or a wide thing, or if it was just a part of the body, or if we would just walk through it. Um, and uh, they were all running at the same time, which gave us a lot of freedom and a lot of responsibility at the same time. And also made us all be in the same moment, like nobody could change, uh, switch gears, change energy when it's not their shot, because right. we were all in the shot all right. the time. And also this sort of surveillance feeling that came up was really, I would probably say helpful for being in this situation, yeah. What did you think when you saw the film put together? Curiosity to see what he was going to do with that? Since you didn't even, you're not hitting your marks or anything, you're just in it. And none of the actors I imagine knew. Well, I, I always knew that they were preparing very well with Lucas Zal, the DOP, and the whole team. The cameras were all set up when we got there. It was almost like... 10 or 11 in the morning so that we could start immediately. I knew that they had done their work. There would be no mistake in it. But um, what I saw, and let me make that clear, the Jonathan Glazer was very transparent about what he wanted to do with it. He was. We always knew that the music that would be added, I knew about Mika Levy. We knew about the sounds that were, would be added the um, the fire and all the things we see behind the wall um, although they weren't there when we were shooting but we had them in mind um, but what I saw was beyond my imagination I was overwhelmed while seeing it because it became so much bigger than what we had done as actors you know yeah. and that like added up to the feeling of being an element in this with like serving to something that wasn't my creation in a sense, you know what I mean, so. Oh yeah, it's like, and you, and you resisted taking on that role. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you didn't want to like, 
Nazis and the Holocaust and all of that. That was something you steered away from, I think, right? Yeah, it was there. I, I felt that there were kind of a lot of narratives reproduced in the past years, and I always found it strange that so much craft goes in recreating this time and this energy and this this thing that I can't even talk about. This violence um, and the joy that some of my fellow colleagues find in playing those guys. I never thought of taking on anything like this, but it was different with Jonathan because the doubts that I had was, were his doubts too and the things that he wanted to do with it and what he wanted us to do was so different from anything I've ever heard before um, that I thought I want to try it. I was curious, you, you uh, studied at a, a, a dramatic academy in Berlin. Yeah. Um, and uh, did you always want to be an actor? Is that Something that you were born with, or? No, I come from a family that is not artistic at all. There, there are a lot of teachers in there and people who do all sorts of things. I come from a family like further back from farmers and workers, and so there was no artistic space in there. And my English and German teacher uh, opened a drama club when I was, I don't know, fourteen or fifteen, and that's when I f felt I will try that because I never had any special hobbies or anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't good at so many things. So I tried acting and um, it was so much fun that I never wanted to stop again. You found out you were good at it. Yeah, yeah in a way, yeah. I found that I could express the things that I wanted to express uh, with the things that I had in my hands at that time. And yeah, and it was basically the fun of it, the thrill, and uh, also, again, the connection with the people. Yeah. German stage acting is, is different than a lot of other countries, though. I think they oh. yeah, go 24 seven, um, the part of a, uh, you know, the actors are more intense in the, uh, in the productions from what I've heard. Um, it's a different theater system in the first place. We don't play like two months of a piece. We play it for two years or sometimes 15 years, right. like <laughs> twice a week or twice a month. So you will get back to it over and over again. Even when you're shooting, you would have to go back to the theater and play the piece when you're in a contract like Do you this. like that? Well, there is, if you are really committed to doing only this, it's the perfect thing to do. It's yeah. the perfect life to live. To me, I really like it. But when you want to do films, it's a bit complicated and I would prefer to have this shorter terms and playing and then it stops. But we're not at that point, so. I bet you Hollywood's going to be calling. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that of doing, um, you know, bigger Hollywood type movies and things than he's more independent. Yeah, I've never been the sort of person who kind of projects into the future. I've found that not so helpful in yeah. my life because there are some expectations sometimes and then you're disappointed and you know, I, I don't like to do it. I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you now. That's yeah. what I do. And um, what happens next, I really don't know. So. Yeah. I don't know. Before we go, I wanted to ask you, you did a stage production of Hamlet. It was a gender yeah. reversal, right? So you played uh, the lead role there. And what I thought was interesting that I read is you did not leave the stage during the intermission. You stayed on the stage. Is that why? Now, why did you decide to do that? Mm, that was for several reasons. Um, but one of them is that he says in the text that he can't move forward. It's just he can't. And I found that I found that expression very interesting that he feels so stuck and that he can't do anything. And also there was one reason. And so I felt like, why should I leave stage? And, and the, the we go to the intermission with a certain text and we start again with the same. So it was kind of a yeah. time lapse, whatever thing. So I felt like I better shouldn't move. And also we tried to, to um, or I tried to leave the stage, but it changed the performance completely because what happens in those 20 minutes is uh, the sort of calm that enters my space or my mind 
is something that I couldn't create with my colleagues outside or in the wardrobe anywhere. So I, um, yeah, I prefer to stay, stay there. there. Which is it's fascinating. You started a trend because before I went to Cannes, I stopped in New York and I went to see a bunch of shows uh, on Broadway. And on two of them, Jessica Chastain in A Doll's House also did not leave the stage. She's sitting there. The audience is just sort of watching her <laughs> during the intermission. And um, uh, 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 yeah, the other okay. one, uh, Parade. Um, uh, he uh, stayed on stage the entire time during the intermission. So, See. you know, <laughs> I hope it's not going to be in contracts one day that people have to stay. On stage. <laughs> that you so have to stay so on nice. stage. Yeah. Uh, which begs the question: Do you want to go back and forth between theater? I gather that's uh, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, you de I need both. <laughs> yeah, I really can't. An actor can act even in a strike. You, the stage is is there. Um, yeah, that's for true. Everyone. And it can be anywhere. Yeah. Well, these two films are extraordinary. Uh, anatomy of a Fall, which is a great title, by the way, because it means so much. It's mm -hmm. an Anatomy of a Fall of a relationship, of a marriage, and all kinds of things, too, not just, yeah. not just falling off. And, um, and then, of course, The Zone of Interest, uh, and both well worth seeing. Thank you so much for joining us on the actor's side. Sandra Huller. Thank you. Thank you.